Hi, it's Corrine. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I'm making a handmade card from start to finish and I'm using some Copic markers and a really cute stamp set by Jane's Doodles, Home Sweet Home. I also made a matching envelope and this is a stamp set that I've not used before. I also have a cut piece of transparency. I know it's really hard to see, but I cut it into the shape of clouds. So it's my stencil for my clouds. I'm using two scrap pieces of paper of Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound. I have some peacock feathers, distress oxide, and some memento tuxedo black, being that I'm using Copic markers. That's a Copic friendly safe ink. So I'm just going to kind of set up my stamp, see how I want them to lay. I'm going to stamp one of them off on the other piece of paper because I want to cut that one out. I also have some full sticky post-it tape there that I'm going to use as a mask. So again, I'm just kind of laying these out, deciding how I want them to sit. The one in the middle is going to be stamped on that separate piece of paper and cut out because I, in my mind, I'm going to pop it up. I want the house on the left and the house on the right to be a little bit wonky. I don't want them to sit straight. I want them to kind of sit off to the right a little bit to lean a little bit. And I'm thinking that I want a sun up in the top left of my card. So I'm using my Memento Black ink, Tuxedo Black, and I've not stamped these off. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp these a couple times to make sure I get a really good impression. I've stamped them on my masking sticky tape. I got that from Amazon. And the reason I'm masking them is because I want to do a little bit of a sky background. That's what the Distress Oxide Peacock Feathers is. So I'm quickly cutting these out. These were super simple to cut just basic shapes. If you have a cameo, you could always scan those into your cameo and, and a pick scan mat. You could have your cameo cut those out as well. So here's my little transparency. I just cut that out from my cameo and again, using a distress oxide ink, I'm using a round blending tool and just adding on my sky. Broken China would be a good one to use as well, but I really like the color of this. So I'm just kind of moving that around, adding it. I'm wiping most of it off on a scrap piece of paper before taking it to my card base. And once I was happy with that, I went ahead and used a baby wipe to clean everything up. And now I'm using YG11 to add a little bit of grass, a hillside border, I guess and YG17 to add in my blades of grass. After I add those in, I'm not worried too much about the middle because I know that that house in the middle will be covering most of that up, but I wasn't sure exactly where it was gonna cover up, so I did add some of the blades of grass there as well. Then I'm going back to the YG11 and blending that out. So after removing my mask, I'm going to go ahead and color them. I am going to use YG93, YG95, YG97, and E57. And as I've mentioned before, I'm not an expert in color, Copic coloring. I'm actually just learning and loving every minute of it. It is the most relaxing thing to do. So as I color each time, I seem to learn a little bit more of what I like and um, I do like to color from light to medium to dark and then back out to light. Which from watching Sandy Allnock's videos over the years or for quite a while I, I've picked up on. So I'm starting out with my light, lightest color, going in with my medium tone, then adding my shadows to with my darkest then back to my medium and then blending it all back out with my lightest color. And I try not to stress too much about where my shadows are um, because I figure I'll learn as I go and I have been. For this house I'm using B93, B95, and B97. It's my favorite blue combination at the moment. 
I do know, or at this point, I'm thinking I want a sun up in the top left-hand corner. So I am making my shadows towards the right of the house. Like I said, I, I try not to just worry too much about it. Otherwise, it takes the fun out of it. And I just kind of take my time and turn the paper as I need to. Blending it all back out with my B93. Now I'm adding E43 and E55 for my roof and the trimming and the door as well. Again, making my darkest on the right hand side, blending it back out. One of the markers did um, spray a little bit. I don't know if you can see that right in the middle there, but again, I could have taken my colorless blender and tried to clean that up, but I knew that that house in the middle would be covering it, so I didn't worry about it at all. Here is Y11 that I'm gonna use for all the windows of all three of the houses. Here on this house, I pulled out RV04, RV06, RV09, and it's a really pretty combination, but it's not exactly what I was looking for. It was a little bit too bright in comparison to the other two homes. So after I colored this and realized that it was just a little too bright, I went ahead and used some reds on it, and I was really happy with how it turned out. On this one, if I went outside the lines a little bit, I wasn't too worried I was going to be cutting this one out. So here I'm pulling out YG95, E55, and E33 for my little plant in front of the home for the roof and the chimney and the trimming as well. Super cute stamp set. I've had this in my stash for quite a while. I'm trying to go through and use all my stamp sets. Here's where I held it up to them and realized I didn't love it. So I pulled out RV25, RV29 and went over the entire thing and I was so much happier with it. It was just a little bit too bright. I took off the cap on both ends because one of them was a little bit too juicy so I was worried about it running and leaking so um, to equalize it out I just took off the other part of the cap and then you don't have to worry about it running all over the place or blobbing out. adding a little bit darker to the door by using E44. And I started to cut it out and realized that I decided I wanted to put it right back in my Misty. I love the Misty for this reason. So I added it right back where it was and I'm using some VersaFine Onyx Black Pigment Ink. And that gives it a nice crisp look on the outside. So I'm gonna do that with both pieces. And being that it is a pigment ink, it does stay wet a little bit longer. So you'll see me here in just a moment take my, my heat gun to it, just so I didn't smear it by touching it. Here's the sun. I went ahead and colored that, stamped that off screen, colored that, and I'm going to stamp it. I was originally gonna have it up at the top left-hand corner, but I decided I wanted it peeking out behind that house on the left. So I'm going to replace the mask that I had cut out Here's where I'm drying it before I do that because I was worried about smear, smearing it. So I just replaced that mask, stamped down my sun. It would have been easier to do this from the beginning, but at the time I was not thinking that I wanted it tucked behind the home. 
So I'm just going to put the mask on top, use my pencil to trace it, and then use my craft knife to cut that out. And it'll make it look that it, like it's sitting behind the home. I'm again taking my memento black marker and going around the edges to make it look like it's cohesive and a perfect cut. And then I'm using some Scotch Quick Dry to adhere that on along with my tweezer bee tweezers. And now it looks like it's been tucked behind the home or it's coming up behind the home. Now again, I will quickly cut this out. I wanted to, as I mentioned, pop this house up. So I do most of that off camera to spare you from watching that I cut down several pieces of the pop dots, Stampin' Up! pop dots, and place those on the back. Again, just going around with my marker to make it look like it's been a perfect cut. And I even placed the pop dots behind those tiny little pieces of the roof. So like I said, I spared you from having to watch that. It did take me a few minutes and added that on. And now I wanted to add a couple hearts coming from the chimney. For this, I'm just using the VersaFine Onyx Black, which is not Copic marker friendly. So I'm, I am going to color those in with red, but I'm just gonna be careful coloring them in. Here's my sentiment from the same stamp set. And I believe it said love makes a house a home. Really cute sen sentiment. I did stamp it off a few times to condition it being that I've never used it before. And then quickly coloring that in, being careful not to smear the black. And now I'm pulling out my tonic guillotine trimmer. I'm using a piece of scrap black cardstock that I have for matting. I'm gonna mat that first behind my focal piece and then a piece of red that I thought went well with that house in the middle. And then I'm going to add that to a white card base using my Martha Stewart scoreboard to give it a good crease, a good score, and then crease it down with my Teflon bone folder. I will adhere everything with my ATG gun. And I did look for a moment to decide if I wanted to put a little bit of dimension behind that focal piece, but I decided to put it straight down on the card, which I thought turned out really cute. To the inside of the card, I'm adding a few hearts just to tie it in. Three in each corner. Again, using the VersaFine Onyx Black. I'm using my Wink of Stella for the hearts and the sun and my little plant out front. I'm also adding a little bit of white detail with my sign, um, my white gel pen. And then I needed to add some shadows under the house, so I'm using C3 and C5 as a base and then the YG93 to make it look like the grass, but I wanted to give it a little bit gray undertone. And I pulled those shadows out quite a bit here towards the right because if the sun was on the left it would get cast a shadow towards the right and then I quickly put together a matching envelope using my we are memory keepers envelope punch board I absolutely love that it's super quick and I like to make the envelopes right away when I make the card that way they're just easy to send off so as you can see I added a few hearts to tie it in scored it down with my bone folder and then I'm using some fabric tack to adhere it down If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. Thank you so much for stopping by and I hope you enjoyed today's process. Have a great day.